Good morning folks and uh, welcome. Uh, I've been asked, uh, somebody left a, a question in the comments. Uh, could I do a request more, well it actually was more of a request. Could I do a soldering uh, tutorial? And the answer to that is yes. I've just let the iron warm up uh, while I <coughs> explain a few points. The first point is I always get a bit nervous doing tutorials because in case I'm doing something wrong or you know I might do something that somebody else doesn't approve of uh, somebody might do it differently than the way I do it we're all different at the end of the day I'm just waiting for the iron to warm up and uh, I, mean, I thought I turned it on actually uh, <clears throat> You know, we all do things differently. We all work differently. I mean, there's uh, there's different methods everybody uses. Um, you know, and we all develop things our own way. And really, really, the best way I found to learn, uh, the way I learned, was to get the basics down, and then develop your own technique. <clears throat> your own method of doing things once you once you've got the basic technique down you know then you just modify that to what suits your purpose the way you like to work and you know but the most important thing about soldering really in my opinion the most important thing is a nice solid job and neatness it has to look neat you know you're never going to get it to look like it left the factory but there again a lot of the stuff made nowadays you wouldn't want your soldering to look like that uh let's just talk about the equipment that we use for a minute the you know i tend i tend to go to i tend to use antex irons i like antex irons i've used them for years never ever ever had a hit, an issue with one I've never had one burn out on me. In fact, my irons have uh, my irons have always become somebody else's after I finish with them when I replace them because I do replace my iron now and again. You know, whenever I've got uh, whenever I've got a, a bit of spare cash, I always uh, I, I always I always uh, try and get another iron. And then I put my other one in the drawer as a standby, and if somebody needs it, then you know they're welcome to it. But I don't have a standby at the moment. Uh, my last, uh, the last couple of irons I had knocking about, I gave them to Jay uh, from Jay's Vintage Junk. Uh, passed them on to Jay. Uh, one was a little, uh, I think it was either a 15 or an 18 watt Antex, which was not of no earthly use to me because. Uh, it wasn't capable really of melting through the kind of stuff I do. Uh, and the other one was uh, the same as this. This is, uh, I think, I think this is a thirty watt. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But we'll have a look, and I'll tell you exactly. But uh, I find these Antex irons to be very, very good. I think it's, yeah. 30 watt, 30 watts at 240 volts. Ignore the solder, st ignore the solder station. This uh, this was an item I bought from Maplin, and the iron didn't last what? Uh, it was only a tenner, but the iron, the iron didn't even last three months. So I just took all the guts out and just I just use it basically as a soldering iron shoe. Uh, and it gives me because because I've got an extra lead on it. And it gives me a bit of extra leeway with the iron so I can move the iron about. But like I say, we all develop. Oh, hang on. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, the other thing you'll need, as well as a, a, a good iron, depending on what you're going to use the iron for, depends on what iron you buy. If you're doing stuff like valves, messing with valve stuff, if you're doing working on valve equipment, then I recommend... Uh, an iron no less than 30 watts uh, 30 watts is about the minimum you want to go and from there you can go as high as you want pretty much 
Uh, <clears throat> you also need one of these, which is uh, for cleaning the tip of your iron. Uh, you just uh, give it a bit of a dig in there. You know, maybe get something so that you can stick it down to your bench. I don't because it moves, because I move stuff about all the time. But, you know, and then when you've done that, uh, just uh, just get, get your iron, get your solder, and just tin your iron. There we go. Put a little bit on. There we are. Right, and so there, there, Andy. There's, there's not only this. There's, there's other things you can buy. Um, now, when it comes to solder, I recommend leaded solder. Uh, Lead-free stuff is just rubbish, and uh, it ain't worth the. It, it's not worth. It's not worth the hassle of uh, having bad joints and the solder not sticking properly and not taking properly and oh pardon me that kind of thing. Uh, if you if you don't have one of these, then you can always use one of these, which is a bit of emery paper. Which is this? This is a bit of emery paper, and if your iron gets contaminated and that won't clean it, and the soldering cleaner. Uh, stuff won't clean it then you just just basically just give it a little bit of a, a fine wipe uh, to take the contaminants off and uh, re-tin it and re-dip it and that'll sort you know that'll sort your tip of your iron out uh, if you're going to use an iron for a different purpose get an old iron from somewhere that you can use for those other purposes don't use your best iron for uh, like melting plastics and it's all right for doing heat shrink because you can you can use the heat shrink on uh, this part of the iron here on the uh, the element part you know the actual body of the on, on the actual body of the iron the actual body of the iron either if I go out of shot I do apologize but you can use it you can use your heat shrink on this part here like I do or just on the back of the tip like I sometimes do but uh, you know, always keep your tip nice and clean and tin, and uh, you shouldn't go far wrong with that. Now we've talked about solder, and uh, you want to use rosin core solder. Um, uh, you know, uh, this this one I'm using at the moment is. Uh, uh, 0.7 millimeter diameter and uh, you know may, maybe a bit thicker it may be a bit thicker this stuff is good but uh, maybe a bit thicker uh, if you do valve stuff uh, that way it's this still works it does the job adequately but you tend to use a bit more of it whereas the thicker stuff you tend to use a bit less it's just that that's that's the only difference really and now we'll, we'll now we'll get onto now we'll get onto suckers or desoldering pumps as in technically known as I just call it a sucker. Right, there's there's many different ways of removing solder from a circuit board or from any other anything else you want to remove it from. Now, uh, some people use desoldering braid. Uh, I don't, I can't get on with it, um, you know, yes it's, uh, you know, it, it does have its place, I'm not going to say it doesn't because it does, because I haven't got any, I don't own any, but it is handy for cleaning, uh, sold, so it is handy for cleaning uh, holes up after you've actually uh, removed the solder and the component. Um, so they're good in that respect and suckers come in all different types you can you, you can get them you can get them like this a, sta a standard desolder pump you can get bulbs which are rubbish uh, in my opinion 
and you can you can get the braid as I say and you can also buy uh, electrically powered uh, solder suckers and you can buy you can get the really expensive um, uh, Gadget UK has got a nice one uh, Jay's got a nice one as well uh, you, can, you can get some really really nice expensive ones but yeah I find for more for the most part you know I've got I've got a cheap Chinese electric solder sucker I don't know where it is at the moment but somewhere near uh, but I find for the most I, I find that for just about everything I do this is adequate you know this is a this is made by Philips um, and th this is adequate and basically uh, to clean your solder sucker you just unscrew yeah they have a non-replaceable nozzle on these that's the only problem to clean your solder sucker is simple you just pull the body to unscrew the body of the sucker <coughs> tap out all your shite all your, all your old solder debris um, clean all this crap off here some solder suckers have a circlip so be careful that when you uh, when you clean it you don't pull the circlip off with the solder uh, another good thing to do I'm just trying to see if I can spot it if I can spot my oil I'll do it if I can't then it'll have to wait until I find my oil because it fell off the bench last night God knows where it went uh, there it is what I like to do what I like to do and I'll do it now what I, what I like to do I like to just get get a little bit of oil uh, we've got an old uh, we've got an old cotton bud here my other ones are in the other room we've got an old cotton bud here and all you do Put some oil on a cotton bud, just like that. Basically, there's a bit dropped onto the mat there, so we'll get that on. And all you do, really, is just go around the O-rings. There's two O-rings in this sucker. It's a really good sucker for what it is. And the other thing is maybe go around, go right to the bottom, turn it round, and then as far as you can go and then just just try and get a coating on the inside and it'll lift out any debris as well that's in there and it'll save it scraping the fuck out your o-rings there we go that's you know that's lubricated the the iron and the, the solder sucker make sure you get all the solder all the excess solder waste product Make sure you get more, all of it if you can off your spring. And that's where the cotton bud comes in handy again. Because you can clean you can clean your solder sucker spring and the end of your cotton bud falls off. And basically it'll also lubricate your spring a little bit as well. And stop it'll stop stop contaminants sticking to your spring. And also, if your spring is not quite enough, quite strong enough, if it loses its tension, you know, it's if it loses its springiness, then all you do really, you know, there's a piece of solder on there, and it's going to do my head in because it's moving around and I can't pick it off. There we go. And ba basically, you can actually stretch your spring a little bit. Just give it that. That's all you need. Stretch it a little bit and cre increases the power of your sucker a little bit. Make sure that make make, make sure that your so make sure that your pin on your sucker is clean, and make sure the shaft is clean. Uh, and all, you know your plunger. Make sure that's clean, and make sure there's no debris in your O-rings, which there isn't. We're okay with that. And then all you do then is just put your spring onto your onto onto your uh, plunger and 
you just insert there we are you just insert it back into the body of the sucker give it a tight not over tying it only a little bit is needed there we go and if you put your finger under it press it down put your thumb on it and there you are You can actually feel it pulling your skin a little bit if it's a good sucker. Anyway, uh, the next thing to move on to is desoldering tools. Uh, dis you know, like implements. I use these for all sorts of things. These are just two of them, but I've got others. I've got scrapers and, you know, things for... These are really for cleaning out holes. Uh, that's what these are for, but I use them for other things, for hooking things. I use these. This one's very good for putting springs back on things because it's hooked, so you can hook a spring on. It's nice. It's all good for that. But these are primarily you get you get about four or five of these in a set, if I remember rightly. And uh, you know, they 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 they're basically uh, just for tidying up or maybe enlarging a hole. You know, uh, they're not really made for making holes, but you can enlarge a hole slightly with them. Uh, that kind of idea for those. Uh, I've got more of those, but you get the gist. Next we move on to wire cutters. Wire cutters are an essential part of the soldering uh, kit because... Uh, when you put a component in, you're going to want to trim the leads. Some people trim the leads before they put the component in. I put the component in first and trim the leads after. Uh, I'm an after man, not a before man. Uh, but some people do it, you know, everybody has their own way of doing it. You know, there's no right or wrong way of doing that as long as you don't cut the leads too short. Uh, hence why I uh, do the lead, cut the leads afterwards, after I've uh, soldered them in. And... You know, then you know then that they're not too short. But you can gauge it by eye. Uh, the, the next one is a pair of pliers. Uh, a pair of pliers, I, I think, is essential because uh, some components can be stubborn, and uh, and uh, if you if you can't get into it with your fingers, like a, a decent sized capacity, you can pull them off. But certain small things, you can't. I'm not talking about SMD devices. I don't do SMD devices, uh, surface mounted devices. I don't do them unless I'm actually forced to, unless there's no other choice. But I don't. I tend to stay clear of that kind of technology. Uh, I'm old school. That's the polite word for saying I'm old fashioned. Uh, polite way of saying I'm old fashioned. Anyway, but you'll need a pair of pliers. Uh, just to you know, they're handy to they're, they're handy to just lift resistor legs out and uh, you know pull a transistor off after you've desoldered it and stuff like that. You know, but make sure before you pull a transistor or anything out, make sure it is desoldered properly. Otherwise, you'll lose a leg and your, your transistor might have been a good one, and uh, you know you could be a bit fucked then. So you know. Uh, Pliers, yes. So, we've covered the tools. The iron, the cleaner, the solder, the sucker, the to other tools you may need, scrapers and hole and larger, hookers and stuff like that. And we've also covered wire cutters and pliers. Now, what we haven't covered is the technique. Now everybody develops their own technique. Uh, I do it my way and other people do it their way. I mean we all have, you know, when it, when it, when it comes to soldering, we all have a bit of Frank Sinatra in us. We all do it our own way. You know, I do it my way, you do it your way. I mean, I mean, when you read, when you watch this tutorial, you probably do it my way, and and then you'll develop. My glasses are steaming up. God knows why. Uh, but you'll develop. I'm just an oily fat fucker. You'll you'll develop 
uh, you'll develop your own knack, your own way of doing things, and uh, you know you you know you'll start to uh, you know develop your own technique and whatever work you'll do you know you you'll do what you you'll develop it in a way you'll develop the knack of doing it in a way that you know makes it easier for yourself i mean uh because we're both we you know we're all left you know there's more right-handed people than there are left uh sometimes i find it awkward if i have to solder with my right hand but i can still do it and you'll have to if you're right-handed then you'll have to use your left hand on occasions because there's just certain things you can't get to with your right or your left hand it's just one of those things there are times where you have to use your you know your, your non-dominant hand for you know soldering it applies with most things not only soldering but that's just one area where it does come into play now what we'll do now we'll move to the exciting bit Right, this is a circuit board, it's some sort of power supply. Now, basically, uh, but basically, let me zoom in a little bit, uh, so you can watch me work a bit better. Now, but, but basically, on, uh, on circuit boards, uh, I mean, there's uh, you've got you've got all different types of traces, all different thicknesses, widths. Some are tinned in solder, like this one is pretty much all the way. It's designed to take a lot of current, and that's why it's been done like that. But uh, if, for example, uh, we want to remove what, uh, what should we go for? Let's go for something. I'll tell you what we'll do, because I'm going to use this for bits anyway. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll take the bridge rectifier off. Uh, how about that, we'll, uh, we'll desolder the rectifier. So basically it's clean your iron. Uh, just get a bit of solder. That's the other thing I meant to mention. I don't like to hold the roll in my hand. Some people hold the roll. Some people have a roll, have a solder dispenser where they can pull the roll, pull it off, and snap off what they need. I don't bother with that. I, I, I just take off the amount I need. There we are. Put the roll to one side, uh, the bobbin rather, uh, to one side, and I've got what I need there. And it wouldn't need a bit more. I'll just take a bit more if I need it. Now. Now, basically, what a lot of what some people do on fit traces, what they'll do, they'll add a bit of solder. I'm not saying that's wrong. It's not. It's right uh, because sometimes it's difficult to melt through. So what they'll do, they'll just add a little bit there like that. And we, when you're soldering, remember one thing: always bring the iron to the work before you bring the solder. Let let it melt, and that, you get a nice clean joint. So you can't even tell that I've touched that. So what we'll do, we'll we'll remove this bridge rectifier, and uh, we'll see how we go. Now, using your sucker, there's a few different techniques. I prefer to hold it. I prefer to keep the solder melt. I prefer to keep the iron on while I do the sucking. And I didn't get that one because the board moved. But the, you know, and there's, there's other people who do it other ways. I mean, like my mate Jay from Jay's Vintage Junker, I pretty much uh, hope Jay, I don't think Jay will mind me mentioning him. But uh, the way he does it, he puts his iron on and he melts and he pulls it off. He pulls his iron away and I can't do that. I don't know how he does it. But he's sort of like, he's sort of like, does that and sucks it off but I can't do that that's how that's just one example of how somebody else works and see that's a technique that he's developed that he work that works for him but it doesn't you know and, that, and that, that's my point not not all techniques work for everybody you know and the technique I use works for me now We've desoldered that bridge rectifier. 
Now, just give it a jiggle. Make sure that all the pins are loose. They are. So basically, we should just be able to... He says, there we go. Pull it off. That's nice and warm, that. That'll go into my box of rectifiers. And basically, what we're left with is four. If we can just zoom in. Because you can't see that. Just zoom in. Let's take my glasses off and I can move this about a bit. I can see through the monitor. And there we are. Four very nice clean holes. Now, if we're not happy with any of these holes, I mean like that one there, the component came out, but the hole isn't exactly uh, isn't exactly as clean as what you would may want it. You might want that one. The rest are perfect. You might want that one. You might you might think, oh well, that's not. Uh, you know, you might think, oh well, I want that one a bit more open. You know, I mean, it's good enough to be honest. But all you do is just put your iron on. There we are. And if you don't want to do that, you just get your little, your little hole cleaner. Do that. There we are. These are supposed to be straight, actually. It's just straight and that. I don't know how that got bent. I use these things for all different things. Not my look, it'll probably snap. But we've got to give it a go. It bent that way, so it should straighten back out. There we are, that'll do. And all you do is just down your holes. Uh, if I can get you in view, there we go, like that. Like that. You know, and there we are, we have... We have four nice clean holes ready to put our component back on. Now, uh, now let's put component back on. We're going to solder a bridge rectifier back on that was just taken off. Now, when you're putting a component on, components are all different types. I mean, this is a semi. Let me just get you in shot. The, 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 this diode. This bridge rectifier, it's a semiconductor, it'll have a plus and a minus on it. It can only go in one way around. So you, most boards are marked, like this one's marked, and plus and minus and your squiggly AC lines in the middle. Which means your AC goes up the middle here, and your positive is this side and your negative is that side. So that's how it works, in layman's terms. So what we'll do, we'll pop our bridge rectifier back onto our board and oh, it's not compulsory to fart when you're soldering by the way. Uh, I didn't clean the legs on this because I'm simulating fitting a brand new component so therefore I didn't feel the need to clean the legs. Uh, a lot of people like to make sure the component is sitting straight. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's just get it back in shot. There's nothing wrong with that. And put the component in the orientation that you feel that you feel comfortable working. Now I'm just trying to get you to get get you in the best sort of line. That's probably about it. Just see if we can get you. There we are. That's better. Now, basically, what we do next, remember, let's try and get your shot. Clean your iron and Give it a bit of a tin. I'm just tinning the iron. You can't see this. I'm just tinning the iron. Another quick wipe. There we are. So we're nice. We have a nice. You see, a nice shiny tip on the iron. Um, 
depending on what you use the iron for depending on what type of tip you want I like a pointed tip some people like a flat tip some people like a round tip I like it the way it is and anyway what we'll do now we'll the solder in you'll the solder in your hand and you bring the solder the soldering iron onto the work you give it a second to heat it up and then you feed the solder onto it like so being careful not to join the two joints two contacts together and you see how effortlessly this antex and that's a pretty substantial join these traces are not exactly skinny and there we are and why do you always get an itchy back when you what why is it you get an itchy back and you can't reach I hate that I'll tell you what I hate when you when you're walking down the street can you and some heavy and you get an itchy nose or an itchy ass and there's fuck all you can do about it anyway uh, as you can see those joints are nice and clean the diode is put in the correct way negative is this end here positive is here now uh, if you're not happy with how straight it is you can always just work it a little bit when you've put it when you've soldered it there we go uh, for those who like things to be straight and just take my glasses off a minute and look how nice and crisp and shiny those joints are and you know they actually they're actually uniform to the rest of the soldering on this board and that's not bad that's almost factory you'll never get them to look exactly factory but you can you can get damn close now let's go for something else go for something a bit smaller what have we got we've got a little capacitor there little capacitor there no that's not much of a challenge we've got a relay i think there or it could be another recce oh it's another rectifier yeah it's another rectifier uh, we've got i'll tell you what we'll go for we've got a little transistor here we've got a little we've got a little tiny transistor there a little transistor just get me soldering tool and i can show you where i'm where i'm looking we've got a little transistor here now this this will demonstrate on how well the Antex actually works on dealing with small components as well. <laughs> Didn't get that. There we are. That's saw that melt. The other thing is not to keep your iron whoops, on the component for too long. Especially if it's a sensitive component. And especially the sort of stuff I do, which is old stuff, don't hold it on the pad for too long. Because you run the risk of actually uh, lifting the uh, pad as well. And damaging the trace and now just give that a wiggle now we're loose there you see but if you've got big fat i mean i can reach that but you know if you've got big fat sausage fingers like me and you can't get in then all you do we know it's loose and we know we're not going to break a pin off so all you do you just get your pliers just gently get your pliers on your component lift a component out like that you see it's as simple as that and putting your component back in always put make sure that you put it back in the correct way uh, transistors and things are usually marked with the shape of the component you just pop it back in there we are <laughs> there we go we're in and you know again we're simulating a new component being put in and what, what I like to do is just get a tool and just maybe bend one of the legs over 
just bend one of the legs just slightly over not too far because there might be some poor engineer that's got to take this out again at some point so you don't make it hard for another engineer unless of course you don't you know who it is you don't like the bastard <laughs> yeah but you make it as easy as possible for another another engineer to work on it so again we clean and clean our iron tin the tip and like I say bring the iron to the work and then feed the solder in and it's simple as that you know that's exactly and also the other thing to do is to actually check for shorts and we've got none there we're okay uh, the other thing the other thing is is to clean any flux residue you can use ipa uh usually ipa switch cleaner pretty much anything like that uh to uh clean the flux away i've not cleaned it because there's not really any you just get a bit of a i'll just do a simulation because my ipa is in the other room you just get a cotton bud and you dip it in a bit of ipa and you know we, we've put two new components in this board technically we haven't we've put the same ones back in but we are simulate we put two new components in. so we've already clipped our legs and you, you just clean round your work with a cotton bud and you know that's as simple as that that's as simple as it gets uh, things like these heat sinks uh, they should come off with the component because uh, they're not I don't think they're mounted in any way they should just come off with the component uh, things like electrolytic capacitors like this one here uh, get us to get you back in things like let's get me me little pointy stick as I call it uh, these capacitors here electrolytics that one that one that one that one that one and two behind there that you can't see they're polarized electrolytics which means they go in one way it's usually marked on the board which way they go in non-polarized ones can go in either way uh, hence them being not polar, hence them being non-polarized and uh, the only part of these heat sinks you have to do is take the screws out of the bottom of some of them some have screws in some don't this one's a bit well this come out of an Itachi product so it was pretty it was a pretty half decent product I mean there's even three fuses on it uh, it's got three fuses on it so it was well, very well protected as well but this come out of an Itachi product uh, which was pretty well made well sort of uh, the power supply has got plenty of protection in it uh, we've got plenty of regulators you know stuff like that going on there two rectifiers on it obviously there was uh, another output for some of your mains went in here I think if I remember, yeah it did mains went in here and uh, you know, well your mains didn't, your transformer did. Your transformer went into here. And everything else then came out of everywhere else here. Uh, these other sockets were all for outputting voltages to different parts of whatever this was from. It was from a from a, uh, an Itachi uh, stereo system. But the CD player was fucked. So, you know, rather than it being repaired, it was scrapped. But that's basically it, really. I mean, I don't, I don't I, you know, I, I hope I've been thorough and I hope I've covered everything. I've tried to cover everything. I'll zoom out a bit more now. I've tried to be as thorough as possible and to cover most of it. You know, I've tried to cover all of it. Uh, just retin my iron for later. There we go. And when you're not using your iron, turn it off. You know, if you're not using the iron, turn it off. 
because there's no point in bur no point in burning the fuck out of your element if you don't have to. But that's your basics. You can buy more elaborate things. I have got a solder station. I've got a, I've got a, a hot heat. I've got a, a, a hot heat. Uh, you know, a solder rework station. Uh, uh, for an SMD workstation, I've got one of those, but I only really use the heat gun uh, for freeing up turntables that I seized and gears and stuff. <laughs> That's what I use it for. I don't use it for taking M SMD devices on and off. There are those that do that. I leave that sort of electronics to them. It depends on what you want to do as to what you actually use. I mean, I, I, this this here, this kit here. What we've got here is as basic, as basic as basic can get. I mean, this is really what we've got here is really what you would get in a starter kit, except for you wouldn't get the you wouldn't get the soldering iron shoe unless you paid a bit more for the kit. You certainly wouldn't get the Antex iron unless you bought an Antex kit. But you know, basically, the soldering iron, regardless of brand. A solder sucker, a pair of pliers, a pair of wire cutters, a couple of these things, you know, and maybe some, uh, maybe a little, little, maybe a small bit of solder to get you going, and something to maybe clean your iron, and you know, some of some some irons even come with a little stand, which is ridiculously stupid, and they fall to bits, and the, the iron don't stand up in them, <laughs> crap. But you know, this is a, this is basically. This is basically your soldering kit in a nutshell. This is basically all you need to do to do soldering, and you can do any kind of soldering with this kit. You know, you can you know you can you can do SMD devices with that. Uh, I don't because I don't do SMD, but unless I have to, but you can do it. This iron's good enough to do that. It's certainly powerful enough. You know, uh, uh, it'll work. It'll work in most conditions. It'll work, well, every condition I've tried, apart from the other week when I did that bit of a bit of work outside, that we had a bit of a wind and it kept cooling my iron down. <laughs> so I had to come in and get the solder gun. So what we'll do, we'll talk. Well, we'll do a quick talk on the solder gun, if we can find the solder gun. <laughs> it should be in my drawer down here. But it ain't so uh, basically ba ba basically the soldered gun is just basically a more powerful version of an iron uh, I'm gonna go and itchy back oh god there we go I can't I can't remember where I put my freaking solder gun uh, when I brought it in the other week it's in here somewhere I just can't spot it I put it somewhere I've, what I've done, I've rolled the wire up, added me and put it down, and that's it. Uh, is it in there? No, it's not in there. It's not in the middle drawer. It's not in the middle drawer. And I know it's not in the bottom because I've just looked in there, in the second from the bottom. I know it's definitely not in the bottom. But it's in here somewhere. But some, there are occasions where you might need a gun. I mean, some people. Uh, some so, some some people only ever use a gun. Uh, I mean, I, I don't like. To, I don't. I, I'm not a lover of solder guns because you don't really have the. In my opinion, and probably in most other people's opinion as well, and probably not on my own here, you don't really get the control. Uh, I mean, solder guns were great for getting uh, line output transformers, or as the Americans call them, flyback transformers. Uh, hello to all my American viewers. Uh, you know, uh, for getting line out, line output transformers out of tellies. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. You can't do delicate soldering with a solder gun. Uh, but a lot of people use a gun. You know, a lot of people swear by them. I mean, uh, there's a YouTube user called Glasslinger. Uh, you, you, you know, he uses a gun. Uh, you know, he uses one. Uh, I think it's him. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, you know, 
but uh, you know it. You know, Glasslinger uses a gun. Uh, I've seen another guy use one. Uh, that's you know, but for me, for me, for me, I'm not into solder guns, and uh, I don't. To be honest, I can't really recommend them, but. It's so you know not for not not for daily practice, but for emergencies or in a situation where you can't use an iron, then you know it's worth having a gun in your cupboard. It's worth having one in your drawer because you never know. You know, uh, you, you never you never know. You might need a desol you, you might need a solder gun. And the other thing solder guns are good for is for they're good for plastic welding. Uh, they're ideal for that. So if you're going to do any plastic welding, your best bet for that is to use a solder gun. Because uh, solder guns are about 40 or 50 watts. They're really powerful. And they heat up almost instantly. Then you've got your battery powered irons, which are not bad. I've, uh, I think I've got one in my drawer. So let's see if I've got one in my drawer that I can show you. Uh, I've got a little Antex one somewhere. Yeah, here we are. There's no batteries in this. Uh, I don't think there shouldn't be anyway. Uh, no, this runs on three double A's. This runs on three double A's. It's an Antex iron, and look at that. Even the tip on that, even the tip on that is clean, and it hasn't been used for ages. But you know, this is uh, you switch on, press the button, it eats up. If you take your finger off, it cools down. But this this thing eats up very quickly, and uh, I think it has a bit of a stand on it as well. Does that is that a bit of a stand? No, that's just a no, it's just a grip, just so you can hold it. I thought it was a bit of a stand, but it's not. But uh, this is actually good uh, if you like working in another room. And you don't want to take you take all your iron and stuff. It's no good for doing valve stuff. This is only for doing uh, small things like that little transistor we just put on here. You'd struggle to put a rectifier on with it. But uh, you know this is made for very 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 light work. I mean I'll tell you how many watts this thing is, and I don't think it's much. Given it runs on three AA batteries, it won't be much, will it? Four point five watts. Uh, oh sorry 4.5 volts it's 6 watts and this is the Amtec this is the Amtec SZ004WO that, you know that's if you can still get this I've had this for years I've had this a long time it's, uh, and I've used it I went to I, I went to do a telly a few many years ago back in the early 2000s that's how long I've had this I've had this since about 2003 or four or something, but I went to the, I actually took it with me once and went and did a telly with it, and I was able to do the job. There's a few dry joints in the telly, and was able to, this was able to more than deal with it uh, because I knew I wasn't uh, or had an idea I wasn't pulling a, a line transformer or flyback uh, for the American, my American viewers. Uh, as I knew I wasn't pulling out a line transformer, stroke flyback transformer, I knew that this was going to be, uh, because I was already told that the fault was intermittent, you know, if you give it a kick it came on, or bang the top or other side it came on, and you know, so I knew it was just dry joints, so I just took this little fellow with me, and uh, he was able to c accomplish the task with ease, but... Uh, you know, gas irons and gas soldering irons, uh, I don't recommend. I've never yet found one that's any good. Um, and they, they they give off uh, they they give off all types of fumes and smells and you know they're just not nice things to use. Uh, so it's either electric or battery. Uh, now fume extraction I don't use it uh, I don't you know you're probably all thinking it's bad practice well I've been doing it for years I've been in the game I've been in the game a lot longer than some of you and uh, some people have been in the game a lot longer than me 
Uh, I've been doing this since I was a kid. I was about nine when I when I developed a flair. Maybe a bit younger when I developed a flair for electronics. I decided that's what interested me. And uh, when I first started, I started with a screw, a sharpened screwdriver uh, on a ga on the gas cooker. Uh, that's what I started with as a soldering iron and uh, for testing I had a piece of wire a couple of pieces of wire on a bulb holder and a 9 volt battery and I used to use that if the bulb lit up I had a circuit if it didn't then obviously I didn't but uh, you know you, could, you couldn't do voltage measurements or how would it? you could only test continuity really uh, but you know, I've never needed fume extraction. I mean, you know, uh, I've been breathing this shit in for you. I'm not saying it's good for you, it's probably not, but fume extraction, that's whether you decide that you want to go that far and do that. There are people who use it, you know, and yeah, there's not, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's whatever, whatever fits your, at the end of the day, it's whatever fits your needs. Whatever suits your needs, then that's what you do. If you need a fume extractor, then you buy a fume extractor. If you need a £3,000 soldering centre, then you buy a £3,000 soldering centre. Uh, but I don't, re I don't recommend that you do that. I mean, I mean, yeah, I don't mean about the fuel extractor, I mean about a £3,000 soldering centre. No one ever, ever needs, in my opinion, I could be wrong, but in my opinion, no one ever, 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 ever needs to spend more than a hundred pound or a couple of hundred pound on an iron. Uh, you know, if you want something that's all singing and all dancing, then yeah, go and do that. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, like my, my mate Vince, I'll give my mate Vince a mention. I watch a lot of his videos and he, he bought a soldering centre and it was around, I think he said it was around the hundred quid mark. And uh, it's similar to what I've got here. It's probably, I think it's probably, it looks like it's made by the same company. But it's got a power supply in it as well by the look of it. I've never seen it up close. But correct me if I'm wrong, Vince, if you see this video, that is. You know, it's, uh, I'm sure yours has got a power supply in it as well. Um, you know, and that was for, you can get all that. And it's, you know, you get a soldering centre, a heat gun and a power supply. And I think he paid less than a hundred pound, or around about a hundred pound for it, maybe a bit more, but you know, not much more. Uh, he did say uh, how much he paid for it, but I can't remember now. Um, but uh, he's an interesting guy to watch, actually, because uh, I like the way he looks for the faults. He does it the way it should be done, uh, which is basically uh, logical and common sense. You know, he applies logic and common sense, and that's that's all electronics is. Anyway, we're moving off the tangent. You know, let's get back to the job in hand. Basically, uh, anybody can solder, but the key is to solder well. You know, you know, you know, neatness, neatness, and. Uh, neatness and quality of work is everything. More importantly, quality. The solder has to adhere to the board and adhere to the component to create a perfect, good, clean joint. And don't forget to clean. If you're using, if you're using, uh, if you do soldering where the board's been corroded, or if it's a brand new board that you're building onto. Clean the pads first. Uh, clean all your work first. And I generally clean the component legs, usually scrape them with a Stanley knife on my finger before I uh, before I install them. I can give you a quick demonstration of that. Now, I've put my hand, there's a lot of these resistors I've got here, a lot of these resistors are years old. Uh, I've got millions of resistors. I mean, I'll ne I'll never get through them as long as I live. I've got millions. I very rarely buy. Well, I don't. I don't buy resistors because unless unless there's a certain value, uh, you know, unless it's unless it specifies 
that a safety resistor has to be used and I don't buy them I use what I've got in stock and when I run out which I probably never will because I've got millions of the bloody things uh, I've got a, I've got a big box of the damn all mixed values somewhere uh, they're I think in the cupboard down there they're somewhere in here anyway or they might even be in the shed I think I boxed them and put them in the shed uh, but what I generally do uh, with a resistor that I've took out of stock because it's been in there for a few years it's just all you do you just put it across your hand you put it across there and just and turn it and turn it and turn it again so you've got a nice shiny edge on all sides now if I if I fold it if I bend this as if we're gonna fit it now I've only done one leg and you can clearly see where well, you can't actually well yeah let's uh, bring it a bit closer save zooming in there you, are. you can see which one I've cleaned the one I've cleaned has got a sheen on it and the other one's dull so I mean and you know, cleanliness of components is important. Uh, cleanliness of the surface you're soldering to is important. I probably should have said this at the beginning, but I might have done even. But that's the case. Anyway, folks, I'm going to bring this tutorial to an end because there's not really much more I can say about it. Uh, I think I've covered. I think I've covered everything that I can think of, and I've been most thorough. Uh, if there's anything that I've left out that you want to know, then please feel free to leave it in the comments and uh, I will address it. But what we'll do next time, I think, I might do a series on two, I might do a series on different tools. Uh, I might turn this into a series. I might, uh, the next one I might do a, a, a tutorial, you know, maybe the test meter for beginners. Uh, you know, show you you know, show you that show you that uh, don't know how to uh, how to you know use a test meter and use it efficiently, proficiently, and uh, understand what the meters what the meters telling you. Because a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people a lot of people put a meter on a component and they don't understand what it means. You know. You know, a lot of beginners, you know, they put a meter on and they think, oh, well, they're getting a reading. It must be working. You know, and we'll, get into, we'll get into that another time. Anyway, folks, but the next one, I'll do a tutorial on the test meter. But I've got a nice surprise coming for you in a bit. You're going to love it. Okay. <laughs> You're going to either love it or hate it, one of the two. Uh, I'm not going to let anything else out of the bag. I'm going to leave it there, folks. And thank you very, very, very much for watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, then please do. Uh, like the video if you genuinely liked it. If you dislike it, then yeah, be honest. I respect honesty. And uh, if you know, uh, if you click, if you click the bell, you'll be warned of uh, my, any of my future videos. And uh, that's all I can say. Uh, thank you once again for joining me, folks. You all have a good day. It's beautiful out there today. I'm not going to be sat in here all day, I can tell you that. Uh, I might mingle with my neighbours like I did on Monday. Uh, you know, it's beautiful. Uh, was it not, not Monday, sorry, Tuesday. I spent most of the day over at Road Talking, chatting to my neighbours. And I don't usually neighbour, but, you know... I just went over and uh, sat in my neighbour's garden and had a chat and a smoke and whatnot, a fag and whatnot. And I went to the next door and had a brew and a chat and whatnot there. And, you know, yeah. Anyway, folks, uh, you all take care and I'll catch you later. Bye for now.